Okay, after my brief introduction about the basics of CM Studio 2012, I would like to come now to the details of cmstudio.dms server. So, as you can see here in the function bar, we make a difference between archives, folders, and documents. And in principle, with the standard in installation, you automatically install one default folder. And we can click onto this uh, folder, which is not a folder, which is in reality an archive. So that means this is the highest level which we have to establish. And as you can see in my, for my presentation, I prepared already within the archive three different folders, one for the mail inbox, one for my external invoices, and the third for my own invoices, which I send to customers. And if we are looking into the, with a click on the plus sign into the external invoices, then we see that we have installed here as well a folder for the quarter one. That means for the first three months of the year 2012 for my external invoices. So this basic or sample installation which I have here, I want to explain you now with all the features and the functionalities. So let's start with the archive because this is the first step what you have to do. You have to create or modify an archive. Then you have to set up folders. And in the third case, then you can install or set up procedures and workflows. Let's start by clicking here on documents and then we want in this case to edit this default folder by clicking here on view edit. In principle, every archive can be used with a flat structure like a folder. That means you see here various functions like access rights, like status like lookup tables, like notification and monitoring, which we will also have in each folder. So I will limit my explanations here now to the, I would say, fundamental features of the folder, which we, of the archive, which we need here, and the rest I will explain then in the properties of a folder. So let's start with the properties. The first thing what you have to define is the internal name for your archive, which is in our case documents. And at the same time, you mention also here a title of this folder or this archive. That means the internal name is the same how cmstudio.dms server names the subdirectory on its server. The title here and the description is what the user will see in the front end so that he has a visual information or a visual anticipation to the folder and its content. So from this part, this here should be always only a small subdirectory name, which is then shown internally and here you can have an extensive, extensive name and to the front end search mask, we will come back later. So we named it here filing cabinet as uh, our first initial archive. We said here internal name is documents. We don't name, need here any pattern for file names and any numbering uh, and uh, any other of the um, properties because the archive for us will be not used as a flat storage. We will set up later on more diversified folders and so we can leave out those items here anyway. The only thing what is very important is the number of documents per page. This depends now to your screen. If you have a large screen with a high resolution, you can increase this number of documents per page so that without having a scrolling effect, you, if you, with high resolutions, you can probably show up more documents per page. If you have a small screen, you should decrease this number perhaps to 10 documents per page so that in principle, you have not too much to do up and down scrolling on the page itself. 
So we leave it here at the default value of 20 documents per page and we are stepping now with our with a mouse click to the next tab which is important for us. Those are the additional search criteria fields. That means here you can define by yourself search criteria which you will use later on in the search research mask of CM Studio front end interface and where you can put categories and search criteria to each stored and archived document. In principle, we see I have defined here already four different criteria fields. I have said, okay, what I, I want to know every time if I'm archiving a document is the document date. I want to get also the document in date. That means the date at the day where this document came into my office or alternative when the document has left my office. So those are document in and out. And the fourth one is the document ID because most of the archive documents will be anyway invoices, shipment papers, or purchase orders, etc. So that means I need here the ID number also as a search field. You can see here with the numbering, you can in principle influence the sort directory of all your description and uh, uh, search criteria fields. You can say which of the fields are required which fields will be shown in the search mask and you can also define if the content of one of those search criteria fields will be exported. For example, if you want to give the data back to an ERP system so that you can do crossover links between the archival solution and the ERP solution. Only to give you an idea how you can, in principle, add or define your search criteria, we just click here on the pop down so that we get a list because the feature additional fields is in principle nothing else than a form generator. You can define here the form list of what you want to get. And we have here different kind of field types. If we click again here on the pop down, then we see we have text fields, numeric fields, we have multi-line text fields, we can include checklists or drop down lists. That means we have the, all the different kind of possibilities how we can design our search mask. And that's something what is very easy to understand I will show you after this session, in the next session then, how we can research for documents and then you will see that those documents, those search criteria will shown in the search mask and you only have to fill in fields and then you get the appropriate results. Okay, that's the point of the additional fields. The next important item which is very important for generating later on workflows and, and logical procedures is the tab status. That means you can put onto each document two different kind of status. That means first of all you must activate the feature status and then you see from default there are existing two st different status which are already in the application if you install it. That means those two default status will be anyway always available. Status number one is in progress. That's the typical status if documents are coming in that they have to be covered, they have to be checked so that you can put onto the document the status in progress. And the second one is archive. That means if you have paid an invoice, if it is approved, if everything has been gone and in principle in the past you put it into a paper folder and put it somewhere in the filing room, then you have archived it. And we are doing here the same. We give either a status in progress or archived. Or we can of course extend this list by user-defined status which you can define for yourself. 
The second thing is, beside the typical status, you can also now here define your own status. I have done here one sample. I have said, and a status can include a check mark. That means then it will be a short asterisk behind the document showing that this is a certain status which is not really archived. And the last point is you can set up the status and link it together with a reminder. If you see if the reminder is included, then there appears a second uh, tab control or feature. And if we click on this here, then and scroll a little bit down, then you see what the payment reminder means. That means payment reminder includes also the functionality of an email notification, which is sent from DMS server to a certain user operator within our system with a subject, in this case, invoice need to be paid, and a certain text, hello, Margarita, this text field is very small from the listing, but of course you can write in more, please take care for the payment of the following invoice. That means, in fact, if you are putting onto the document during your approval process here, this status payment reminder as additional status to in progress, for example, you can define a date at which cmstudio.dms server will remind, in this case, my, coll my colleague Margarita Zell, that this invoice has to be paid in future. Let us say we have got an invoice, I'm approving the invoice, the invoice is correct, and the invoice has to be paid in two weeks, that means end of March 2012, then I can, in principle, beside the fact that the document is still in progress, that means it is under working progress, we can define here the reminder date, and then Margarita will get an email at the certain date, with a link in the document, and I can show you this a little bit later, how this looks like. That means you get the document, you get the link, you can click on the link from your email application, and it opens the browser and you can look into the document and do all the things which are necessary for the payment procedure. Let's go back a little bit up. That means in this way you can set up certain kind of different status and reminder status so that you after the basic setup of the application are a, that you will be able to in principle use the application not only for archiving procedure but for real document management workflows. And let's do this as an example very simple that we define here a second status that we say okay reminder for Martin Scharschmidt and the F should be then in small character. And the short key will be then in this way MSREM, like Martin Scharschmidt reminder. And from the sort direction, we say here position two. It includes a check mark because this is a typical status that the document is still in progress. And we say also here with reminder, and now we have to remind, to define the reminder by clicking here and saying, we, this will be a reminder for Martin Scharschmidt. It will come from dms.server at marsh.com. And the subject is, please take care for the document, or please take care, that's enough. And the text is, hello, Martin. Please check the following document. So in principle now we have set up all the required steps 
And we can say here in the right button bar, add this status to the list of existing status. And as you now see, the data will be successfully saved. And now we have two, beside the default status, we have two different status, which we later on in our document workflow can choose from the option list. That's something what I will explain you afterwards in the description of the document workflow. Okay, about access rights, about monitoring, about notification, we are not talking now. That's something what is more related to the folder in deep. So as far as we are not having a flat structure, but a diversified structure, as you could already see, I'm not taking care for those features here. We can now say save and close. Very important, what we did now, status, additional fields, those are functions and features which are dedicated to the definition of an archive. You will never find them again in the definition and setup of a folder. So this is very important that you do those steps for, uh, before. That means the search criteria fields are always dedicated for one archive. If you have different archives, that means if you have, for example, here beside the documents, a second archive for your human resource department with HR documentation in, then you can also set up for the second archive a different list of search criteria. But those search criteria which we have now defined for documents will be for all the folders and all the documents which we will archive here available. Let's go now back to the second step that we say, okay, we have now created the archive. Now we want to look into the inbox folder. This is typically the folder where all scanned mails, where all scanned documents which are coming from external will be put into and then the workflow procedure that means the classical distribution of documents in the document management workflow will start. Let's click on inbox and say then again view edit. What you can see here already is that the list of tabs and features which we have to cover for are much smaller and less features as in the archive. That means, of course, as I explained, things like status, like additional fields have not to be changed here or to be defined. Let's start now with the properties because here the property field information are much more important. Let's start with the, with the step number one, we have to define an internal name. And as you see, we have to define also a corresponding title, which is again for the front end interface very important. So if we say here inbox, the extended description is mail inbox. So the next step is that we have defined a pattern for the file names. That means documents which have been scanned, which the DMS server imports into the database should get a unique document name. And that's what we here mention as file name. So what we had here defined in our example is mail minus in, minus, and then the date in the brackets is a parameter which is included in our documentation which kind of, um, which kind of parameters you can use, but it's, it's very simple. This includes now a complete date with time and seconds, and at the end you have again the number parameter which then relies to the current numbers which is encountering with each new document. Here with hide files we can prevent the system to import file names which are secondary files like XML files which are 
uh, uh, sent with a scanner, scan documents which we do not want to import into the archive itself. The next step is that we say which is the default status for this folder. You remember that we had the two different status and we can just here click on in progress or archived. That means here you can now in each folder define which status is the default one for every new document which will be imported into this folder. And of course, if we are talking here about the mail inbox where the typical mail in subdirectory includes new documents which have to be processed to other colleagues which have to be approved before they can be archived, it's clear that we here have chosen as default status in progress. Very important is if we change this in three months, then we say we have a new status and we want to get something else here as default status. And within this subdirectory, there are already documents listed which should uh, be kept into this uh, folder. Then if you change something here, you always have to click for the saving procedure apply status for the existing documents within the folder. We don't change it, that's fine. But what is very important, we want to show extended document information. This feature is very new. It comes with the CM Studio 2012 release of the DMS server. That means in your listing table, if you have filled in the archive fields, that means the research criteria fields, where we just have explained to you, which can be defined under additional fields, they will be shown like a subtitle. It's very similar to what you know from Google. If you're going to on a search engine like Google and if you're looking for some search criteria, documents or links will be shown and in the two or three lines below you see the major important criteria why this document was represented in the Google result list. And in principle that's the same what we can do in a similar way with our stored documents here by activating the, uh, the extended document information. This is a feature which you can define for each individual folder. In some folders perhaps it's not necessary that you see those information. In others it's recommended or it's, it's better to see them. Yeah, then you can activate or deactivate it. So this is first of all the basic property set for each document which will come into your inbox. Let's go now to access rights. Access rights, we have to make a difference. That means we have to differentiate between, first of all, the access rights for the extranet interface or as I said before, for the front end interface. That means I can give the various user groups of my portal application here access to this subdirectory or to this folder. And from the front and from the search mask, only members of the group's management and operations will be able to access the inbox. This is typically why the secretary, the chief of operations, whatever. So yeah, we have said, okay, the management and the operations can look into the mail inbox. But we have a second level for access rights and if we scroll a little bit down then we are talking here about the access rights in the administration interface. Let us say the front end interface are typically wise only is used for research questions and for research tasks. But the, rather the real document workflow will be done in the administration interface and here we have to differentiate between document management operators. That means typically wise like here, our three secretaries and document management administrators. The administrator can access every document. Of course, that's implied. The operator can only access documents and folders which are granted to him. 
where he has got, he or she has got the permission to use it. So that means if we have a folder like the inbox, we have to assign to the right operators the correct access rights. And if we have a folder like, for example, mail inbox for the management, then it is very important that we can also deny the access for a certain administrator. Think about the technical administrator should not be able to access management mail, should not look into HR documents, which the management has to access, of course. So we have to make here the, the difference operators can be assigned to and administrators, like my person, can be limited. That means they can be denied from the access of a document. Here in the simple mail inbox, my person as administrator is allowed to do so, but my colleagues, for example, Julia can only view and change documents and my two colleagues, each one Margarita named, can change, view and also delete documents. The fourth level is the one that they can assign access rights by themselves to other users, which is normally not oftentimes used. So, yeah, we have in principle here defined, now already predefined the access rights for the mail inbox. So we have now the properties set up. We have defined the access rights. How does cmstudio.dms server now import the documents? How does it get the documents into the database? And that's part of the monitoring feature. That means, as far as cmstudio.dms server is a browser-based application, you cannot from your client PC scan directly into the application, like with a Windows FAT client application. That means we do not support, for example, Twain interfaces of a scanner. The only thing what we support is the batch import procedure. That means the monitoring and observation of an FTP server folder or a folder within your LAN, your local area network. That means in consequence with a scanner you're doing scan to FTP or you're doing scan to folder. You're putting the documents into a certain interim folder and this folder will be managed, will be observed, will be monitored by cmstudio.dms server and in our example, it's very simple. Every five minutes, cmstudio.dms server is looking onto this FTP server, is logging on as admin on this server, is looking into the directory English demo inbox in passive mode. We can here test the FTP connection. That's what we can do now. You see we have successful connection. We can close this window and that means after five minutes, if cmstudio.dms server fi finds new documents, it will import those documents. And at the same time, on the interim subdirectory English demo inbox, it will delete the documents. That means scan to folder sends, the scanner sends by scan to folder or scan to FTP into this directory a document. It will be detected as a new document by the document management server and then we are importing it and on the interims, the in-between subdirectory, we will delete it. There is only one permission which we have shown here. This is that we wait for an OCR result. That means between the process of scanning and importing on this server PC, there is running an OCR process managed by either Abbey Fine Reader as in the corporate edition or OmniPage Professional. And what we are doing here, and that's very important that we here define this, we are waiting only on P2 
PDF documents. That means we have to mention here star asterisk dot PDF. Let's type this in. We only want to import PDF documents. And we are saying, okay, we are waiting for the OCR result. What is OmniPage or Abby doing? If they find a new PDF document, they OCR it, and with the same file name, they put a second file there, ended with the extension .txt, and from this .txt file, DMS server can take the OCR document content and puts it into the full text index for researching documents. So, but we have some parameters which we can define. We don't need to define it, but we can. That means we can say the maximum wait time of the OCR process is 60 minutes. If my OCR workstation is not attached or linked to it, is not active, then we anyway will import the documents after 60 minutes without OCR result. But if this happens, we will send here a notification about the failed OCR result and we can define to who this notification will be sent. So we can be sure anyway if the OCR process has been performed proper or not, every document will be latest time after 60 minutes imported. And that is a parameter which you can define by yourself. You can say, I want to give the OCR process maximum five minutes, or I give him a whole day, whatever. We can define this here as an interims procedure time frame by ourselves. Let's go back, back a little bit upwards. That means now, yeah, we have defined the properties of the folder. We have assigned access rights to the different user. Now, and that's the most important part, we have defined the monitoring and import time frame and procedure, how the DMS server will get the documents. Okay, now the server imports over the days documents. But how do I get aware, how do I will be aware about new documents in the inbox so that I can start the distribution of the documents within the company, yet therefore I have the feature notification. That means after the document will be successfully imported, the DMS server sends, in this case, an email to my person saying there is new mail has been arrived. Dear Martin, please check the incoming documents and distribute them to the appropriate colleague. That means it is not necessary for me that I'm always every five minutes looking into the folder if there is coming in something new. No, the system will notify me. And that's something what we, we can here now close the folder definition, we have not changed something. So what we can see, I'm, I'm just looking here now into my mailbox of my groupwise server. I can type in here my password. Okay, we have logged into my email client and we see here that there are several messages coming in like, for example, new mail has been arrived. And as you could see before already, we had three emails or three documents got into the inbox. And if I click now here onto my, the message with a double click, then I will see here is in principle the information. Martin, please check the incoming documents and distribute them to the appropriate colleague. That means this is the text from the notification set up what we have defined, and we have then here three links for three documents. This is very important. The system doesn't send out for each individual document one email. That means if you are scanning in, if you receive from the postal service 10 letters, for example, 10 uh, mail documents, and you scan them step by step in with your a document scanner or with your multifunctional device, then you will get only one email with the related links, in this case for three documents, three links, which you can work on. 
So we don't want to generate spam emails. That means here we can now go click onto one of the documents. It will open my in my browser uh, edit window of the document and then we can explain you. I will explain you now in the next step the different kind of possibilities how you can distribute documents and how you can start the document management workflow.